Welcome back to another GTN Coaches Corner where we answer your triathlon questions for you. You can send us any questions you like in the comment section down below this video, but below any other video, and just include the hashtag GTN Coaches Corner. We'll pick them up and we'll answer them for you as soon as possible. Right, we've got some fun questions this week. First off from Moritz Jakob, 6690. I have recently registered for my first ever beer mile. Yeah. Um, I've never run any distance under five kilometers for time. The event is already in two weeks. Do you have any last minute training tips for me? Well, Moritz, you have come to the right place. <laughs> uh, now, for anyone that isn't aware what a beer mile is, uh, as the name suggests, you run a mile and you consume beer. Uh, but the logistics, you essentially start with a can of beer, uh, you down that as quickly as possible, you run 400 meters before grabbing an X can, and you keep repeating that. So you do four laps of a track, so 400 meters for each lap, and you have a can of beer on each of those laps. So four cans in four laps to complete a mile as hard as possible. It's actually really tough. And I'll get on to some tips for the beer mile in a second, but first off, those last minute training tips. Um, I'm also somewhat of an expert in last minute panic training. Uh, now the key here is to do some short reps. It's kind of get your body primed and ready without causing too much damage or issues because let's face it, your body's not used to doing that sort of intensity or that sort of shorter distance. Uh, so I'd recommend doing some short intervals of 20 to 30 seconds at this pace above your 5K race pace. So for example, something like six lots of, 20 seconds on at that high intensity pace, 40 seconds off where you just cruise, you jog, as I say, repeat that through six times. And then you might want to just do a couple of minutes jog and if you're up for it, do that through once more. And that's just quite a nice simple workout. It's not gonna kill you, you're not gonna feel terrible, like absolutely exhausted at the end of it, but you're gonna get a lot from that. You could also even do these efforts uphill, uh, therefore you're still getting the intensity in, but you're not running quite as fast, so at risk of injury. Uh, now I know it's focusing on the BMR here, but this is good advice for anyone trying to do some last minute training for something they're not necessarily used to. Now for the beer mile advice. Um, now, depending on how hard you're planning to go, um, you'll essentially be running that first probably about 100 to 150 meters without breathing because you will have downed the beer and it's kind of going down and blocking your airways whilst you're running that first 100 meters. And then after that, you've got to try and get the gas out as best as possible. So there'll be a lot of kind of belching and you've got to kind of force it out uh, because otherwise what happens is you come around to the next beer and you've got all this gas there and you're taking the beer on top of that. It doesn't end well. So uh, as gross as it sounds, you've got to get that gas out and that's the biggest bit of advice I would give you. And you could maybe try and practice that with water in training if you've got time before your beer mile. Anyway, best of luck. Let us know how you get on Moritz. Um, right, next question. Um, Equally as fun. Uh, it comes from Keely Moane, Moane, Mayano. I, sorry, absolutely butchered that one. Uh, thoughts on, and this is a serious question, urinating in my tri suit on the bike. Uh, did so in Ironman California last year, but was pouring with rain, so basically showered afterward. Not sure I'd do it again unless it's raining. Seems gross and risk irritating skin. Saves maybe two minutes, well, actually six, because I did it three times. Hmm, that is a lot of time. Um, <laughs> you've got some good questions this week. Now, uh, for anyone wondering why on earth you would do this, um, well, if you do need to stop to go to the loo during a race, if you imagine on the bike, you'll have to decelerate, stop, go to the loo, then get back on your bike, accelerate again, Meanwhile, you may have detached from a group that you're maybe working well within and sharing the load, and suddenly you've lost the best part of a couple of minutes, and that's just on the bike alone. Um, and yeah, as you say, if you have to do that multiple times, you're losing quite a lot of time. Um, so for that reason, a lot of competitive age groupers and certainly pros, they just keep going and they will just urinate on the bike. They will, however, normally try to go to the back of the group unless they have someone wheel sucking and they want to get rid of them or make them come round. Anyway, um, yeah, so quite simply, my suggestion here, um, I've done it myself and James would have done it countless times, I'm sure, uh, is when you go, just grab some water and pour it over you. If you don't have that on your bike, just make sure you grab some at the next aid station. So you're still showering down. As you say, you don't want to irritate the skin. Uh, the other bit of advice before the race, just make sure you put whatever lubrication on down there that will just kind of 
add that extra barrier and help with things. It's a bit of a crude subject, isn't it? But it's real, and this is the sort of stuff that we all do, um, and we do need to talk about it. Anyway, <laughs> moving on to next question from Try to Try. Uh, actually, got a couple of questions that's similar, actually. So they've said, I've done a few half distance races, always early starts. Now I'm racing in Italy where we'll start only at 12.05. Do I keep my pre-race routine or are there things I should try? I've actually had almost the same question from Michael Chiller, um, but actually his race doesn't start until 4 p.m. He's doing an Olympic distance there rather than a half um, Ironman distance. So um, this is another really good question, um, particularly so it just does seem to be more and more races popping up with later starts and it does kind of throw that plan totally out of the window. Um, there is no one answer to this because obviously how late really depends, every race Time start time is different, um, but the key here is just making sure that your body is fired up, ready to go, and also that you're not half asleep because you've just sat on your sofa or lay in bed the entire morning. So typically what I suggest if you've got a late start is get up fairly early, you don't need to get up at the break of dawn obviously like you would ordinarily, um, and actually head out for some brief exercise first thing in the morning, be that a short jog, um, a short spin on the bike if you have your bike um, and you haven't racked it the day before, and then go get your breakfast, have a nice chilled breakfast, and then it gives you probably another couple of hours just to relax, you can just yeah chill out for that time, and then start thinking about having some snacks and maybe even a light lunch and get yourself ready for the race. If you do have time, again, this really depends on how late your race is and what time it is, you might have time for another bit of exercise. You want to try and get that heart rate up, the body ready, as I say, nice and primed and not half asleep. So you might then at which point want to go for another very short jog or short spin on the bike, kind of maybe the opposite of whatever you did in the morning. Um, yeah. And uh, there we go. If anyone actually has any advice, they've done something themselves before. As I say, there's lots of races popping up with later starts and they found it worked really well. Let us know in the comment section down below. Lovely to share that sort of stuff. Right, next question from Lucas Salome uh, said, hello, I was doing pretty much well in form, but I've recently tore my ACL. Ouch. Meaning months in rehab and away from any physical activities. What are the best ways to maintain fitness or even good mental health while dealing with injuries? Ah, well, firstly, we're really sorry to hear this and hope you recover quickly. Um, first and foremost, do not let it get you down. It can be all too easy just to focus on the negatives, having built up all your fitness and worrying about losing that and not being able to race, etc. Try to focus as hard as it and odd as it sounds, try to focus on the potential positives of the situation, the blessings in disguise. Uh, for example, and I often used to do this if I was ill or had to miss out on some training for a while, this might be an opportunity to get on top of that strength work that you always said you were going to do but never really did because it got in the way of other training that you wanted to do. So now is the time to really focus on it and actually you could come back a lot stronger from it and really iron out maybe some inefficiencies or imbalances, um, be that in your running, your strength, whatever it may be. Um, or for mental health, you might just want to actually use the time to get on top of your pain cave, sort it out, organize it, clean it. Um, or you might just want to actually just step away from triathlon completely and do something, another hobby, something else to take your mind off of things. Um, it is very personal and it's got to be right for you. So don't just do what everyone else tells you to do. Cool. Right, uh, next question from Kerry Hicks, 6198. I'm a pretty hairy dude, <laughs> but if I'm wearing aero calf sleeves for my race, do you see any reason to shave my legs for those sweet, sweet aero gains? <laughs> right. Uh, to be honest, calf sleeves will actually do most of the work for you. So in theory, there's no need to shave the legs. However, I guess it depends on how hairy your knees and your sort of lower thighs that might still be exposed are. Um, in fact, I think that'd be quite fun for you to shave just that little section that's exposed and then the hair to start again. Anyway, um, yeah, uh, it, it, the aero calf sleeves are gonna do a lot of the work for you, as I say. Uh, I think you will still lose a little bit through kind of the uh, drag through the hair around the other hairy areas that are exposed, but um, you do you. Uh, right, next one from Chris Ward 2K. 
Why are triathlons age categorized and not weight categorized outside of veterans? Arguably, weight has a much bigger impact on outcome, similar to boxing, fighting. As a bigger bloke who carries a lot more weight, muscle, and fat than a typical triathlete, I like an upper body session or two, CrossFit rounds. I feel like I'm actually as fit as many of those who place in age group, but I'm carrying 20 kilos extra. Uh, goes on, goes on. Uh, well, actually, Chris Ward, there are a couple of categories that do take this into account. They're not in every race. You typically find them over in the US a little bit more. So you've got the Athena category for females that are over or weigh at least 165 pounds, so over 75 kilograms. And then for the men, you have the Clydesdale category, which uh, for men that weigh over 220 pounds, so over 100 kilos, um, which sounds like it would be yourself. So you could look out for some of those races. Um, aside from that, um, and I don't want to get into the kind of like the politics of it all, I guess, you know, that is sort of part of the battle with triathlon and yes, people are going to perform better because they optimise their body or they were genetically just better shaped for and that's what they've decided to focus their attention on. If you decide you want to do CrossFit and perform at that, then I guess that is the trade-off that you have decided to make. Um, without meaning to offend anyone there, because I'm really not, I just, yeah, that's that's kind of the battle that we play within any sport that, you know, I'm not going to be the best weightlifter because I've decided to focus on triathlon training and endurance work. So anyway, um, check out those categories though, if you are interested. Right, next question from Ivan Nano. Um, and this is the final question. Said, hey guys, is my bike slowing me down on climbs? I own a P5X. I ride with a group of cyclists um, and I'd say I'm probably in the middle in terms of fitness. When we're doing a uh, any climbing, even a 1% gradient or more, everyone passes me, even those I know don't have my level of skill. When we're are going 1% or more downhill, I pass everyone, even those who are much better than me. I even pass them without much pedaling. Is it the bike? I'd say my legs are a bit meh, um, but that wouldn't explain how I smoke everybody in the downhills and with barely any effort. I know my bike is a little heavier than everyone else's, maybe one or two kilos at most. Is that making all the difference, the P5X? was a top of the line bike not long ago. If it's not the bike, what could it be? Haha, -ha, yes, the aero versus weight debate. Now on a 1% gradient, I'd be very surprised if it's your bike that's slowing you down. Now for context, uh, aerodynamics trumps weight at anything at around or above 15 kilometers an hour, even uphill. And I'd imagine on a 1% gradient, you are probably still traveling at 15 kilometers an hour or above. Going downhill, of course, you're carrying a little bit extra weight with that bike, um, and it is aer more aerodynamic than most other bikes, so I would assume you would pass most people downhill. So I suspect, actually, um, the reason other people are passing you is down to a position issue. Um, obviously, you're on a triathlon bike, they're potentially on road bikes. Um, a triathlon bike is obviously optimized for being in the aero bars. So they are, in theory, in a slightly better climbing position, but it's you shouldn't be losing tons of time and you should really be able to keep up. Um, so it sounds like maybe you need to just have a little look at your setup on your triathlon bike to make sure that you are able to lay down the power. Um, or, quite simply, you need to train on the hills more. I would add, um, if you are worried about the P5X, I've ridden the P5X. I know James has as well. You used to ride for Cervelo for a long time. Um, Whilst it's a big old bike and there's a lot of material on it, it is incredible at handling and also climbing. So I probably wouldn't go blaming the bike and I'd probably, as I say, look at the positioning and um, maybe even having to train the hills. Anyway, great questions. Thanks for sending them in. Had a lot of fun with that this week. As I say, please send yours in with the hashtag GTN Coaches Corner and we'll see you next time.